What's happening hardscapers? Today we're going to talk about what you should be doing before you start prepping your paver base. Let's get into this. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about the two steps you should be doing before you start prepping your paver base. This means that you should have already picked out your paver base. If you haven't, we have a video on the best paver base materials, whether you're going a traditional base, which is a dense graded base that incorporates a gravel or a three quarter inch down to minus, plus a concrete sand bedding layer. Or if you're going open graded base, that's three quarter inch open stone that's clear, there's no fines in it, with an HPB or a quarter inch chip bedding layer. Or alternative to those two, you could go synthetic base, which is a condensed polypropylene sheet, and these reduce the excavation greatly. But if you're trying to choose the right base preparation method for your project, you can check the link in the description below for the best base for your paver project. And there's no one one best solution, it just depends more so on the application for that. And then we want to skip over the excavation and pretend that we already have an excavated site and we're starting to build on top of that. So the two steps after you have that excavated site, what you should be doing for every paver project. So before these two steps, you should have a perfectly excavated base. And that means you haven't disturbed the base. You're down to a good foundational subsoil that's either clay or sand or a combination of those two. And it should mimic the slope of the top of your pavement as well. That means it's sloping away from any foundations and it should have that one eighth of an inch to quarter inch per foot slope on it, much like the pavement surface does. So it should be a complete mirror image between the two. You can use string lines to be able to make sure that you're measuring down from to ensure that you're hitting the mark on each of those throughout your entire project, but it's better to use a rotary laser level to be able to use the grade rod, move around, make sure that you are where you should be. And then alternatively to that, you can use a high precision altimeter. This will measure down your elevations and just make sure that you're hitting the mark on each of those spots. And throughout the excavated area, you should be plus or minus three eighths of an inch over a 10 foot span. So there's a little bit more wiggle room with inconsistencies when compared to your actual pavement surface, but it should be fairly consistent. If there's any high points, you can rake those out, get rid of that excess soil. And if there's any low points, you can kind of build that up with some dense graded material. And now that we got that out of the way, there's two steps you need to be doing for every paver project to ensure its success. Step number one is to compact the subsoil. And this does often go overlooked. And ultimately, if you are compacting a clay subsoil, you should be using a rammer or a jumping jack to be able to compact that. Ramming action is really what that clay subsoil needs. But if you have a sandy subsoil, you can get away with a reversible plate compactor. We want to build this project for success that there's not going to be any sinking in the future. So ensuring that our subsoil is nice and compact is just as important as ensuring that our base is compact. Another step that we like to do in this process is to amend our subsoil. We work with a lot of clay in our area, so adding a little bit of three quarter inch open graded material to that subsoil and compacting that in, along with a Portland cement or type S mortar mix to draw out the moisture from that subsoil, especially if we're working in a moist time of year, that's another thing that we can do to our subsoil to ensure its success in the long run. And once we got that out of the way, we can move to the second step, which is just as important. And I've done a lot of lift and relays in my time and on every single lift and relay, I never see this added. I've never done a lift and relay, dug down, saw the bottom of the base and saw this material and that is a geotextile, whether woven or non-woven. And we'll have a video linked down in our description to help you choose whether you should go woven or non-woven. But ultimately what that choice comes down to is geotextile has four properties that help your project. That's separation, filtration, drainage and reinforcement. A woven geotextile does a great job with reinforcement but not so much a great job with drainage. Drainage. That being said, it still does drain. But a non-woven geotextile does a great job with drainage, but not so great of a job with reinforcement. If you want the drainage characteristics along with the reinforcement, you should be using that non-woven geotextile along with a biaxial geogrid. You'll get the drainage characteristics of that non-woven geotextile along with the reinforcement characteristics of adding that geogrid. However, the biggest thing with these geotextiles is it's going to separate your your subsoil 
from your base material. And that's incredibly important, especially with clay material. The easiest way to think about this, though not a perfect analogy, is stepping into mud. When your boot or the load goes into mud, you'll see that mud push out and up as well. Well, the same thing is happening when a load travels over pavement. It transfers that load down and into your base through and to the subsoil. And over time, you'll get that mixing of that subsoil along with your base material. And we want to prevent that as much as possible to ensure the longevity of that pavement surface. So by adding a geotextile, we're separating the two materials, ensuring they're not going to mix, while also adding a reinforcement property if we're using that woven geotextile or if we're using that non-woven, adding that biaxial geogrid to add that reinforcement property. Geotextile is also incredibly inexpensive for what you're paying for the entire project. So it's definitely worth it to invest that small amount to ensure the longevity of your project. If you're a contractor, it also helps you stand out from your competition if you're able to use this information and communicate it to your clients. It'll help you distinguish yourself from those in your market that are not doing the same thing while also showing that you've got the knowledge to be able to complete this project and ensure its longevity. So the two steps you need to absolutely do between the finish of the excavation before the start of your base preparation is to compact your subsoil and add that geotextile. Once you've got these two steps complete, you can start working on preparing your base. You're gonna be working in lifts of inches depending on your compactor that you have, however many inches of gravel it is able to compact at one go. Once again, you can add geogrid in those lifts to add some stabilization to your paver project. You should be using either biaxial or triaxial geogrid, but we've also got a link in the description below for geogrid in your paver bases. Much like preparing your subsoil, you're also going to be mirroring the top surface of your pavement with every lift that's going down to ensure a uniform compaction of that base. And if you wanna learn more about the installation of interlocking concrete pavement, we have courses available on the members only platform. We have a three hour course on the installation of interlocking concrete pavement, along with another three hour course on the installation of segmental retaining walls. And at the end of those courses, there's tests and you do get a certificate of completion for that. And along with the members only platform is our software, the How to Hardscape headquarters, which helps you streamline processes in your businesses from budgeting to estimating and so much more. So you're also able to use Use those courses to train your employees and onboard new employees. Link is in the description below for that as well. And if you have any comments, questions, anything that came up in this video, leave a comment in the comment section below. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content like this. Thank you so much for watching.